Hi, it's Denise at Motley Fabric, and thank you so much for joining me today in this video for the beginning cross-stitch kit that you should have received through your school. So you would have received a little bag with a pattern like this one, also a three inch hoop with fabric. This is the finished product, isn't that cute? Uh, and all the embroidery floss that you're going to need. Now for this project, we only need three strands at a time. So I went ahead and I pre-separated your floss. When you buy it in the store, it comes in six strands. So for the beginners, I separated. Now, if you did receive an advanced kit, which is gonna look like this, there we go, it's gonna look like that one, then I did not pre-separate your strands because I think the separation is a good skill that you're ready to learn. And I have a separate video, to, just a very short one, a few minutes long, um, that's gonna kind of walk you through that and the importance and why you care about uh, strand count and all of that kind of fun stuff. So go ahead and pop over there if you're an advanced student and watch that. Now for this video for the beginners, um, I'm gonna go through step by step, start to finish, you get to see everything. And there's little tips and tricks along the way. And I'm gonna go ahead and put timestamps in the description. So if you wanna skip parts of the video and just go straight to something maybe you have a question about, then you can go ahead and do that. So I think with that said, we're ready to get started. Okay, now we're ready to sew. The first thing we need to do is get our thread onto a needle. So let me show you two different kinds of needles. This first one is a regular hand sewing needle. And this hole here where the thread goes in is called the eye. So you can see it's pretty small. For an embroidery needle, and sometimes you can get a similar needle called a tapestry needle, it's much bigger, all right? We're using multiple threads. Sometimes embroiderers use up to six, or they have much thicker threads or fancier threads that are made of different materials. So that's why we have a much bigger eye for this embroidery needle that we're using today. So there's two ways to thread our needle. First, you might moisten the end of a thread and then just put it on through. But maybe that's difficult for you. That's totally okay. Even I don't get it on the first try every time. For that, there's a special tool called a threader and that's what this is. As you can see, it has these little wires that make a diamond. So the hole in the middle of this diamond is much bigger than even the large eye on the embroidery needle. So I'm gonna take my needle, put the diamond threader through the eye. There we go. Now I have a much bigger space for my thread. And you can see my thread is through the threader. The threader is through the needle. And when I pull, I'm not gonna pull from the end of the threader like this because the wires might pop out. So I'm gonna grip it firmly right here, grip my needle firmly and give it a little tug. Now the thread goes through. A lot of beginner sewers sometimes try to tie a knot here to keep the thread on the needle. And for this project, I'm going to say, I don't think you should do that. I think you should practice managing your thread that may mean that you need to rethread a couple of times, but that's okay, that's part of the learning process. Another tip is that when you hold the needle to sew, is you hold it right here like this. Boop. So now you've got the thread and the needle between your fingers. All right, so what's our, our next step now that we've threaded the needle? I'm gonna pull out the pattern and take a look, and here you can see I circled this spot on the pattern. This is the middle and this is the first one, the first stitch that we're going to do. Okay? So it's this little one that's red and that's why I chose red thread. So I take my hoop with the Ada cloth and that's what this is called. And you can see it has a lot of holes and what we want to do is sew in the hole and not in the fabric itself. It's okay if you make a mistake, but just do your very best, okay? We wanna turn this to the back and just kind of eyeball what seems like the middle to me. I feel like this one seems like the middle right there. So I'm gonna turn it back around and just gently pull some of the thread through and make my first part of my first X. I just wanna see, am I, am I happy with that space? before I get too far along. So that seems pretty middle to me. I'm pretty happy with that. So now I'm gonna turn it to the back again and I'm gonna pull this 
until I get a little bit of a tail here, one or two inches. This is the tail right here. And there's a lot of different ways you can deal with your tail, especially as you become more skilled. But for this, we're just gonna tie a simple double knot. There, oops, I missed it, there we go. There's one. I'm going to cut off the end of the tail as well. All right, I'm going to finish this X by coming up down here. And then I'm going to show you about the stitching the X's. Okay? Now this project only has X's. In cross stitch, there's a couple of other ones, but all we're doing today is X's. So I made this little example eight o'clock. These are the, the holes, okay? So what I did was I started up here, I came up and then I went down into that hole. Then I came up and I went down into this hole and it made an X. So we're just gonna keep doing that. We're gonna keep coming up and down holes as long as you don't go down into a hole you just came up from, I think you're gonna be set. Now you may notice throughout the video that I tend to always start up here at number one and go down to number four or the other direction. I always do this slash first. That's something I like to do, but as beginners, it's okay. You can do it any, any ways that are gonna work for you, okay? We're gonna make all these X's. All right, so let's look back at the pattern and see what I need to do next. So I started with this center red. So now I can see that there's one red above it, one red up into the right, and then one, two, three in a straight line. So that's what I'm going to stitch. I'm gonna go up, up and over, one, two, three, down. That's also why it's sometimes called counted cross stitch. All right, I'm going to just do this real fast and uh, probably speed up the video. And when I get to the end, I'm gonna show you how to switch to a new color. All right, here you can see, let's see if it'll focus. I went into the fabric and not the hole. So I'm going to undo that one. I'm just going to put my needle underneath the loop, pull it out, then, then I'm going to go right through the eye. Oh, I think I did that out of screen. Sorry guys, I was using my eyes and not looking at the camera. All right, there we go. I like that better. And we're on our last X, so we'll just keep it out of uh, fast forward. All right. So when we compare, I've gone one, two, up one to the right, one, two, three down. And that's just perfectly matches one, two, up one to the right, one, two, three down. Perfect. I think what I want to work on next is this light brown color. Okay. So I need to grab my light brown. That's this one. And then I'm going to um, take the thread off. I'm done with red for now. Oops. Pulled it too hard. There we go. So I'm done with that red for now. I'm going to thread my needle. This time I'm going to use the threader so you can see that again. The diamond through the eye, put the thread through the diamond. Grip it firmly and give it a little pull. There we go. All right. So when we look at the pattern, this light brown, I'm going to do this spot right here. You can do whatever spot you want. 
I'm doing this spot right here. It's right next to the red that I stopped at. It'll be easy to tie these two together, okay? So I'm gonna kind of pull my red thread out of the way so it doesn't get tangled up. And poke my brown, there we go, my light brown. And again, I'm just pulling it gently. Like this. Okay. I'm come over here, pull it till I have a little tail of brown. And I'm gonna tie it to the red. I'm just gonna do another double knot. One. Two. Then I'll trim off that little bit that's left over and trim off the red. Now I can keep going with my light brown. That one's a little bit harder to see on the video. There we go. Oops, I I got tangled on my, on my fabric, so just do that. There we go. And we're just gonna keep doing that. Keep going back to your pattern and figure out what stitch did you just finish and what stitch are you gonna do next? I am going to continue to use light brown and do all this. Can you believe that? I'm gonna do all of that. And uh, so I'll stitch that, we'll have it in fast forward. If I happen to get a little knot, I'll stop and show you how to undo the knot. But that's, that's the only thing you need to do is just make little X's in your color and follow along in the pattern. If you have any questions, you can always call me at Motley Fabric, okay? Here, I pulled a little bit of the red tail up to the back. See that right there? So I'm going to turn to the back and just use my needle to gently pull the tail away from the hole. And now that little red bit that was there is gone. Let's keep stitching. Looks like I had just enough. That's great. So next, oops, sorry, there we go. Gotta make sure you get it onto a safe place, like I said at the beginning of the video. So to recap here, I did all my red, and then I did my light brown, all the way up, boom. Next, I think maybe I'll do the little eyes and maybe the beak, because I think that'll be fun. Now, it's kind of hard to tell, I think, on the video, but um, I'm gonna make the eyes black, and then I have a very dark brown that I wanna use for around the feathers. I think black might be too harsh, so I included a very dark brown in the kit that you have for all of these. And uh, we'll just keep going and stitching. And if I come across a knot, I'll show you how to undo that part. You can see I have sewn quite a bit and actually I sewed a little more than this and um, I had to undo it uh, Because I lost all the video that I did of all this stuff. So I'm bummed But uh, I went backwards because I want to show you something that I did here. Okay, 
So I sewed all around this dark brown. I did the yellow, then I did this stripe of dark brown, then I did red, then I did this stripe of dark brown, and then I wanted to start my orange feather, okay? So my last stitch, I'm gonna use my scissors, I guess, to point. My last stitch was right here, but I wanted to start my orange here, and you can see they're a little further apart than what I had been doing. So you could just tie them together on the back, even though they're a little further apart, but what I chose to do is, and I put this here, this is a fake tail of me ending this dark brown um, piece right here. So we're gonna pretend this is the tail, but it's just some thread I put on there. Anyway, um, so I tied the orange to itself right here, just like we did at the very first red one at the beginning of the video. So I tied the orange to itself, cut off the tail, then I stitched, keeping this brown tail out of the way by holding it like this with my thumb as I was stitching, or my finger. So stitch, 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 all the way up here. And now my thread is next to the brown one and I'll tie it and then cut off the brown tail. And that's what I did, so this is just a sample. You can see, let me use the needle this time. You can see here's my little brown tail right there that I cut off this piece. All right, so now I'm just gonna continue. I still haven't hit, well, I did hit a knot already, but that video got lost. So I'm gonna keep going. I'm sure I'll have another knot and uh, I'll be able to show you how to undo it. Okay, so I ran into a knot. So this is perfect to show you guys what to do. When I was pulling it through, I realized, hey, it stopped a little too soon. So I looked on the back and that's what I found. So first I'm gonna gently get this knot away from my cloth by just kind of giving it a little tug so that it comes away. All right. So most knots are caused by twisting and so they come apart pretty easily. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put my needle through this little loop, okay? And one of these thread, one of these sides, this side here or this side, when I pull it is going to make the loop get smaller. So let's see if it's this side. Nope. I'm pulling it gently. Nothing's happening. So now I'm going to use the other thread and I'm going to pull it gently. And look, it's getting a little smaller and now it's kind of tied around my needle a little bit. See that? We're going to take the needle out. And then we're going to gently pull and this little loop should pop right out. Ready? Now it's gone. And then I can get my thread from this side and just pull it a little bit. Pull it and the rest of it goes through and my knot is gone. Pretty cool. So here I finished my orange feather, but the next thing that I want to do is my dark brown line right here between the yellow and the orange feathers up here. Um, so I want to put dark brown right here. So what do I do with my leftover orange, right? Well, I trimmed it off. It's just a, about two inches, a little bit more, enough for me to tie a knot with. And I'm just gonna keep it out of the way until I do some stitching near here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my dark brown and I'm gonna start it, I already put it on my needle. And I'm gonna start this square right here as dark brown and I'll just do a few stitches. I'll tie it to itself as we did with this first red one and as we did with this orange one down here just to get it started. 
and then um, I'll start a new thread of orange to do the orange feather right here. Okay, let's get stitching again. Now you can see my last little bit of yellow belongs right here. And I just finished way up here. So this time, instead of tying off and all that jazz, I'm just gonna go straight all the way across to where I need to go. If I can get in there, there we go. So the back has this long bit right here. This is my thread and it's going kind of a far distance, but that's okay. That's the back, who cares about the back, right? All right, so now this is my last yellow. And what I'm gonna do, I think, is the dark brown. Um, and I'm going to start here. I'm gonna tie it to my yellow that I have. And the dark brown, I'm gonna go around the rest of the outline. And remember, when I get around some of these oranges, I'm gonna tie them to these little ones that we left hanging off, okay? And I'm gonna get all the way back to the beginning. Actually, what I'll do is I'll get right here. And then I'll tie it to my medium brown, do my medium brown, and tie the medium brown to itself. So you can kind of follow along and see, I know it's going kind of fast in the sped up parts of the stitching. Um, but uh, if you have any questions, you can always come to the shop, make sure to wear your mask uh, if it's during uh, COVID times. And, uh, or just come on over if this video is still up and, and COVID's over. Uh, or you can also give me a phone call. Okay, so let's keep going. So I reached my first um, loose orange and I wasn't paying attention and you can see, somebody's trying to start their car outside, you can see I accidentally sewed this piece all into the back. So that's okay. I'm just going to leave that one there and I'm going to cut this little bit off right here. We can't really see it. This little bit right there I'm going to cut off. Just like that. Okay, and then I'm just gonna tie my knot with the two strands that are remaining of this orange, and I'm gonna try to pay more attention when it comes to getting closer to this other orange one right here. 
So make sure you just cut the orange. We are still using this brown. I'll just cut that little orange bit off. Put my needle back on. Oh, I think I need to use my threader for this one. And then keep on sewing. So now you can see that one, one of the two orange pieces, tails, that we had has now been tied off. So I'll keep going around, and when I get here, I'll tie this one. I'm going to try and pay more attention so I don't accidentally sew over one of the strands or through the strands. And that's okay if that happens. I just pre I prefer it to not happen, so I'm going to try and be a little more careful. All right, so I was supposed to leave the other tail there so I would have something to tie it to when I get to the end. And you might do this. So what do I do now? Well, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to stitch just a few more squares, one or two. Oh no, there we go. I'll just do one so the video will be a little bit shorter, okay? And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tie a medium brown to a medium brown as if I just ran out. So first, I'll cut myself a nice little tail. Okay. Then I'll start my next X. Not all the way, just a little bit. And then pull it through gently. There we go. Okay. There we go. So now I got two tails again. I'm going to tie these ones together. Oops, sorry. Keep in the frame of the video. Sorry about that. One, two. Okay. Now. Now I'm just going to cut one of these, okay? And leave the other one for when I sew all the way around, for when I fill up the body and then come back. Then on the back, I'll have this to tie to and be all done. So, see? Even if you cross stitch for a long time, you can still make mistakes, but it's all right. This is just thread, right? It's no big deal. We can always undo, redo, or find a solution like the one we just found. Let's keep going. Now, I'm gonna challenge you. Maybe you wanna invent some feet for this turkey. Maybe the turkey's standing, right? Maybe you wanna add a little line to be the ground. Maybe you wanna add your name under here, okay? Um, I'll put a link in the description to a very simple alphabet that I think will work well with the space that you have here. So you could put your name, you could put the date, Maybe you could say, Happy Thanksgiving. You do a lot of different things now that you're done with this. And it will become a decoration at your house. Um, the last thing I'm gonna show you in the next section is how to gather all this stuff up, right? Because if you hung it on the wall like this, it's kind of, this part's kind of uggo, right? You wanna get rid of that. Oh, another thing you could do is maybe you take a color and you just fill in the background a color as much as you can. There's going to be a little bit of a white background unless you take this off its hoop, okay? So I'm just going to show you real quick how to do that. You unscrew 
up here. And now, if you wanted to, you could put it back on a little bit differently so that your background could go right up to this little indent we have and maybe even a little beyond. And then once your background was all full, you put it back on the way that it was. Put it back on. And this is also, if you get to the end and you feel like you're not centered enough, this is another thing you can do for that as well. And then put your little screw back in right through here. And then it twists and gets tighter and tighter. You may need a grown up's help if you're in the very younger grades, uh, but I suggest you give it a try yourself first. You'll feel really proud of yourself, even if you're not able to do it because you know that you tried. Okay, so there's that. Okay, so I'm gonna, I guess, pause right here and then I'll show you how to do this background part. Okay, so I took a nice long thread that I had left over, this orange, and I tied it so the knot is facing kind of the front, right? But this is gonna get folded down like that. Um, I was looking, and we wanna keep our tail, by the way, because we're gonna tie to it at the end. But I was looking at this part, and I think maybe what we need to do here, this one happens to be real close so I think maybe you would just use some glue, some school glue. Put a little dot right here, or maybe hot glue if it was with a parent's assistance or an adult, and then kind of glue that part down like that. But what we're gonna do is we're just gonna kind of randomly go in and out around the circle. Nice and loose. Doesn't have to be close together either. This part here probably needs a little glue as well. It doesn't even have to be in a straight line. And then you'll see what we're gonna do with it later. And this, this case, it doesn't really matter that much if you go through the fabric or if you go through the holes, it doesn't really make a difference. All right, we're almost back to the start. We've got all these kind of loose stitches back and forth. The other thing we wanna make sure that the last stitch is gonna get you kind of close to this and on the same side. So like if I go right here, I'm gonna be down that's okay, I guess. But I need to go up one more time. So that my tails will be on the same side. Oops, sorry, I got kind of low. Um, so the tails will be on the same side like this. So I take my long piece here that I did. Oh, let me put my needle away. There we go. And I'm just gonna pull it a little bit like this. Don't pull too hard and fast or else you might snap your thread. I'm getting there. All right, that's pretty good. And then we're gonna tie it nice and tight. And this time, I think I'm gonna do a triple knot just for good measure. There's one. Two, three. Okay. Come on. Come on. Cut it. One, two, get those off. Now from here, remember, I think this one I probably want to glue, and maybe this one. When you look at it from this side, they're all hidden. And then an additional step you can take as you can get your scissors and now that it's kind of you know pulled tighter you can cut some of the extra fabric off 
this. The scissors aren't strictly speaking for cutting fabric. I really should only be cutting thread with them, but I think we'll do okay this one time for this video. Now it's down like this. And then if you want to, you could put a little bit more glue on the inside and then push those down like that to make them even more um, secure, okay? If you have felt, you could just fold this and then fold this down and then put the felt on top of it. But be careful gluing on this because remember, it has all these little holes. You don't want the glue to kind of like peek through the holes on the front side. Those are a bunch of different options that you can do. And I hope you had fun sewing with me and doing this project. This was the beginner project. I'm gonna show you the advanced project too. Ooh, look at this one. This one's got a lot of counting, I'll tell you that. This one's a little bit easier, that's why it's the beginner one. And you're done. Thanks so much again for joining me on this video. I'm really proud of how well I'm sure that you did. And if you'd like to send me a photo of your finished product, I would love to see it. You can send it to me through email or you can post it on Facebook and tag Motley Fabric and I'll be sure to see it. Thanks so much and I'll see you in the next video.